So, next question. What, uh, suggestion for beginners. Um, I would honestly just suggest getting a variety of colors. Uh, I know that they have starter kits out there. Uh, I personally never bought one. I started off with buying 12 Copic markers. And me and my twin sister Wendy have built up our collection from there. And we, we probably have at least over $100 worth of markers because these are about 7 bucks a piece. And including the ink is probably even more than that. Um, so honestly, I don't, I can't really say. Um, I, I, I just get a variety of colors because I know that in particular, um, and this kind of branches off into my next one as to what markers was I using in the video. I will always include the marker letter and number because I don't know if you guys got to see this that well in the video. But each cap, if I can, you can't really read it because I can't really focus my camera right now. But each cap has a letter and a number on it. Um, and then it has like a color name underneath. So this is R24 Prawn. Um, and then there's also going to be like an R25, um, an R37 is what I have over here. And just basically getting a bunch of the same letters with different numbers will get you different shades. Usually lower numbers are lighter shades, uh, bigger numbers are darker shades most of the time. And then you also have like the combination colors, like there's a blue and then there's a blue violet, which is BV. Um, and then there are all those really random ones, like T is for gray. I don't know where they came up with that one, but um, apparently T is for gray. And um, so, you know, it, it, you can pretty much just look at the markers and figure out which ones are which. Um, to just kind of get a feel for what exactly it is that you need, what you're looking for. And just, I would suggest a bare minimum of one shade darker and one shade lighter per, per every shade you have. So if I have like a medium tone red, I would get one darker and one lighter red in that same like letter group to go with it. Um, cause that gives you, um, I wouldn't go like one letter down, at least if you're only bar buying one marker, um, I would maybe get, for instance, like this is a R, how do I say, R24, and then I also got an R37, um, those colors actually work really well together, together, the R37 is light enough to where it works for most things that I need, and it's also dark enough that it, per se, I go over something with this one two or three times and get that whatever corner I want nice and dark. I can usually go over it with the darker red and go a few more shades darker and it blends really well. So another thing that uh, people ask me, and we're about the different kinds of Copics. Uh, I am actually not that knowledgeable about this until I did a little bit of research. Um, the ones that I have are the Sketch brand, uh, which apparently, according to Wikipedia, has the most variety of colors, and um, includes both a chisel tip and a brush tip, and there are other versions, like the Chow, I think that's how you say it, C-I-A-O, I think it's Chow, and then there's like wide versions too. Um, and I've seen, like, thinner ones that hold less ink than the ones that I have now. Um, honestly, I would, seriously, if you want to know about the different kinds, I would go to their website and look at it, or Wikipedia it, because, honestly, this is not something that I'm very knowledgeable about. I'm not the Copic Marker Master, the shock, but, um, yeah, definitely do some research on that. I know I'm making you guys read, but, um... Honestly, I think the sketch ones are the best ones. I've seen pictures of the uh, at least some of the other ones, and they're, I mean, they work, because I know that, um, at least one, one I want to say it's the Chow ones, uh, that are for more of fine details, and I think I just broke this cap, no? Okay. Um, and they work better for more of the finer details of things, as opposed to, uh, you know, general ones, and then the wide ones are better for really big spaces, uh, so, I mean, that in particular is really nice, so, honestly, it's, it's 
all up to research, you guys. Figure it out. Uh, lastly, we're playing Biocopics. It was where some, some people asked me, and unfortunately this one's kind of hard for me to answer because... I get my Copics from a local store. It's a local run business. It's not a franchise. I'm not sure there's any other stores like it anywhere that, you know, are the same. But there are some stores that I do know of. Like, I have never personally shopped at Michael's before. But I have heard nothing but good things about them. Um, I honestly really don't know any of the art stores. It's all going to chalk up to what local art stores are near you. I know um, some college bookstores even carry Copic markers. Mine does. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you can also order a bunch of stuff off of their actual website, which I will leave a link to the website in the description below, so don't worry about that. Um, I got you covered there, you guys. I think one of the last things I want to say is I know some of you were really curious as about some of the art supplies that I used. Sorry guys, it's going to be in another video, because, um, honestly, I, what I really want to do is I really want to, um, did I fill this for you already? I'll put a little bit more in case that happens. But, um, I don't know, I just, I, I want to sit down and actually go through some of my art supplies, talk about them, give you guys tips based on what I buy, and really just give you guys an idea of what you might like. Because, honestly, every artist is different. Everyone's different. They have their own preferences. I do things my way, and you may not necessarily like the way I do things. So, basically, what I expect you guys to get out of my videos is suggestions, but they're not law. So, what my channel is mostly going to focus on is developing style. And getting those basic skills fine-tuned so that you guys can develop a style. Because I think that's one of the most important things an artist can do is distinguish who they are, figure out what they like to draw, and just kind of explore the different options that are available to them, because honestly it took me a long time to get where I am now, and figure out what style I wanted to do, and I just wasted so much ink balls. Um, but yeah, so, um, I will have probably at least two or three separate videos on the tools that I use and how to use them. For instance, I want to go through um, shading with pencils, how to use pencils, the different types of pencil lead, and then also some pen techniques. Probably do some more Copic stuff with you guys, because um, I love doing Copic stuff so much. And hopefully if I can eventually get to the point where I can do things on the computer, I would also like to do some kind of computer stuff with you guys too, so, um, you know. There's a variety of things that I want to show you guys, but, you know, unfortunately that's going to have to wait for another day. So hopefully you guys, um, I answered at least most of your questions about Copic markers. Um, if you have any more, feel free to ask them in the comments below, and, you know, I mean, I, I don't think there's really much else I can add, but in this video here, I mean, not all of my markers are filled, but, you know, I think, I think we did good, guys. High five. Can't high five. So sad. <laughs> I feel like I'm just rambling at this point, so I just need to stop. Okay, so I hope you guys learned a lot from this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!